Hello, everyone. I'm Linda. So glad to meet you again. Today, I'm going to share with you how to use VS2 to make neural networks in the ECS environment. Creating neural network with VS2 does have some limitations. For example, it does not support creating array on graph, which means that you cannot create large neural networks. Because the calculating process is a little bit complicated, you cannot convert this graph into drop component system code. There are many more efficient tools that can be used to make neural networks. I also implemented a code version of neural network, but I think using VS2 is more suitable for prototyping data calculations and makes it easier for you to get started from scratch. Okay, let's learn how to create a simple neural network using VS2. Let me introduce the structure and the propagation mechanism of the neural network first. Here we created a four-layer neural network from layer 0 to layer 3, with three neurons in each layer. The first layer is the input layer. There are no weights, biases, and activation functions. The first layer is used to directly obtain the 3x input value of the training data. The last layer is output layer. We only use one neuron to output value as prediction value. The other two hidden layers have three neurons each. Every neuron of the last three layers need to calculate a weighted sum of all the output in the previous layer plus some special number code bias. Let's name this weighted sum z value. Then compose the z value with some activate function like sigmoid function or ralu function to get its output value a. Repeat that over and over, we will get the output a value of the last neuron is the prediction value of our neural network. We create two types of component data in our project to save these values. We can define a loss function to calculate the square of the difference between the neural network predict value and the real vibe value of the training data. This is called the cost of a single training example. The goal of the neural network updating work is finding the ways and the biases that minimize the total cost. We call this method gradient descent. Backpropagation is a core algorithm of neural network learning gradient vectors according to the slope of the loss function. We need to keep in mind the chain rule while implementing backpropagation. First, we need to multiply together all the derivatives from the current position to the loss function. For example, the derivative of cost with respect to each weight of the last layer is equal to the multiplication of the following three derivatives. The derivative of cost with respect to output value A of the last neuron, the derivative of A with respect to summary Z of the last neuron, the derivative of Z with respect to each weight of the last neuron. The derivative of Z with respect to the weight is equal to the output value A of the previous layer it links to. The derivative of A with respect to summary Z depends on different activation function type. Well, I kind of regret not paying too much attention to mathematics. So if you're a college student, please study hard on mathematics. Eventually, one day you will thank me for that. Second, when a variable has multiple paths affecting the loss function, we need to add those derivatives of every pass altogether to get the derivative of cost with respect to this variable. Keep iterating this same chain rule backwards to layer 1, you will get all the derivatives that determine each weight and the bias in the gradient. Multiply these derivatives with learning rate, you will get the changes of these components. When you go through the underlying calculus of this algorithm in the video, note that each variable has some labels on it. The superscript label indicates which layer is in, the first number of the indices indicates the neuron index. The last number of the indices indicates the weight index. This is the most difficult part of the project. Let's move on to implement our algorithm in VS2 Draft 6. Click the link below. You can download the screenshots of the VS2 graph used in my video. It contains all the nodes and component data needed to run this neural network. In this video, I also implement a visualized scene keep tracking gradients of all the weights. A singleton class is used to exchange data with game objects in the scene. The relevant code is not introduced in this video. 
VS Graph includes the creation of query and component data, graph variables, customer functions, and the forward propagation and backward propagation implementations. We will introduce them one by one. First, we create two query on the Blackboard. In inquiry is the main entrance of our system. It contains an in and tag component that holds most of the global variables we need for calculation, including Z value, A value, derivative of cost with respect to Z of all layers, and the derivative of cost with respect to A of all layers. We also use a float 3 times 3 container to save 9 ways of 3 neurons in a single layer. Because we cannot create variables other than flow type on the blackboard, I create a component data in C sharp. Another query is used to query the neuron entities we create in the hierarchy panel. Each of them has a component data to store the layer index Z A bias weight and a derivative of loss with respect to each weight. Adding generate authoring data modifier to component data, you, you can drag this component directly to the game object in the hierarchy panel and specify the layer and index of each neuron before converting it to entity. We need to create seven empty game objects in the hierarchy panel. Add the convert to entity script and add the neuron component data we just created to save the three neurons of the layer one, three neurons of the layer two, and one neuron of the layer three. Here is a brief introduction of the variables on Blackboard. A Boolean type variable called ones used to control the initialization workflow of always while getting start. Flow 3 type train X and the float type train Y to save the training data we created each iteration. The step and the layer variable is used to control our system state. Layer determines which layer is currently working on. Step determines performing forward or backward propagation. Activation type is used to save activation type of each layer. 0 means no activation function. 1 means ralu function. 2 means sigmoid function. Loss is used to save the cost value, that is the square value of the difference between the neural network predict value and the real Y value of the training data. Learning rate is used to control the proportion of waste changes. With the latest release of VS2 Drop 6, we can create custom functions, which is equivalent to a method in programming, which allows us to reuse a code block at any time. Let's create a customer function that automatically generates training data. Since our last layer also uses an activation function and outputs a value between 0 and 1, we need to regularize the output value of this custom function so that our neural network can work correctly. You can modify the calculation formula for y here. The result of the neural network is to guess the y value that is close to the output of this function. Next, let's create a function that controls the system state. It mainly calculates the next step and the next layer index based on the step and the layer index entered previously. When step equals to 1, it represents forward propagation, and the minus 1 represents back propagation. Layer corresponds to the neural network layer index between 0 and 3. Then we created the activation function. Hereby, we created two activation functions. The activation function can give our neural network the ability of non-linearity expressions. We created ralu and its derivative equation, and the other is sigmoid and its derivative equation. The variable activation type we created on the block board is used to specify the activation function of each layer, such as 0, 1, 1, 2, as I wrote here, which means that the first layer has no activation function. The first layer and the second layer use ralu as the activation function, and the third layer uses sigmoid as the activation function. In order to make the following code simpler, we have created a custom function that can select the corresponding activation function based on different input variables. The input variables include the Z value of the current neuron, activation type, and the bool value back propagation. When back propagation is false, we calculate the forward propagation and select the corresponding activation function according to the activation type. 
When back propagation is true, we calculate the backward propagation. Select the corresponding derivative equation according to the activation type. In order to calculate the activation functions and derivatives of all three neurons in a layer at the same time, I create a custom function and define the input value of flow 3, then calculate their activation function or derivatives and store the results accordingly in the flow 3 variable as output A values. There are mainly three jobs needs to be done in on update. The first one is using the random node to initialize all our weights. This process is executed only once at the beginning and controlled by using the once variable. VS2 also provides once node, but there are currently some bugs, so let's implement it ourselves. The next one is a calculation part of forward propagation and back propagation, which we will discuss in detail later. Finally, the system state is updated by calculating whether the next step should be forward or backward propagation and which index on the corresponding layer should be. Let's go to the main calculation part and look at forward propagation first. Forward propagation consists of two parts. The first is the input layer. Here we generate a random training data x and y. We use the random function to generate a flow 3 value. Treat it as our three input data x values and then calculate our training data y by the custom function calculate y we just created. The calculation method of other layer is basically the same. Because we use entity to save the parameters of neurons, we need a query to find the neuron that matches the current layer. We calculate Z value and A value respectively according to the algorithm mentioned earlier, and save Z, A weights in an entire component as our global variables. Because the last layer has only one neuron, for the convenience of writing the code later, we add an if node here. And if it is the last layer, the value of the first neuron is copied to the other two neurons. In this way, during backpropagating, there is no need to write calculation for the last layer alone. Finally, backpropagation. We have been using layer step and switch nodes to control the code executed at each step. We use a global variable to calculate the derivatives. You can use a get atom node to get the array or index value you need. At the beginning of backpropagation, we calculate the loss function. We use a value of the last neuron along with the training data y we created to calculate the cost value and the printed value to the console. We need to use chain rule here to calculate the derivative of cost with respect to A and the derivative of A with respect to Z and save them in the global variable for subsequent calculations. We also copy the derivative of the first neuron in the last layer to the second and third neurons. Note that these two neurons don't actually exist. I copy those values here only because I want them aligned with the generic back propagation workflow, which is going to pick up values out of the same shaped array from a layer contains three neurons. Next is a derivative calculation of the other layers. It might be tricky to understand the dot node and transpose node here because the weights of the three neurons in each layer are stored sequentially. But when calculating the derivative of cost with respect to a value of the previous layer, according to the chain rule, you need to sample weights from the transposed matrix. Transpose node allows us to fetch the corresponding data in the saved three times three matrix at one time. Dot node is used to calculate the dot product of two matrices. The derivative of cost with respect to each weight is equal to derivative of cost with respect to Z multiplied by the derivative of Z with respect to the weight, which equals to the A value of the previous layer that connected to this weight during forward propagation. The result is multiplied by the learning rate after that. By subtracting the final result from the previous weight, we updated the weight change. The reason why we update the weight after calculating the derivative of cost with respect to A of the previous layer is because we need to use the previous weight's value while calculating the derivative of cost with respect to A of the previous layer. We use the same method with the bias changes.
I also wrote some code to visualize our output. I set the neuron colors to yellow, red, and blue, representing neurons of layer 1, 2, and 3. Since each neuron has three weights, we can use coordinates x, y, z indicating their value, so that all weights gradients are visualized in 3D space. From the animation, we can see that each neuron is trying to find its correct position and finally stays near its local minimum value. Because the number of layers and the number of neurons of the neural network are relatively small, the, the accuracy of this network prediction will eventually be around 85%. If you write its C-sharp code, you can create a native array yourself so that you can use more complex network structures and the accuracy will be higher. The update speed will be faster if you use drop component system and burst compile. However, I recommend that you use TensorFlow to create neural networks in production and use GPU parallel computing in machine learning projects. The ML agents neural networks we used in last video was created using TensorFlow in a Python environment. Thanks for watching. I hope you understand the algorithm of neural networks and how to use the VS2 for complex mathematical calculation. See you next time. Bye.